welcome everyone to today's call. Uh, we named it Exchange and Demo. So this is a bit different to, to what we are usually doing. Uh, usually we have these Friday calls every three weeks and discuss implementation related problems and uh, features. Today we would like to use this slot and um, give an introduction on what has happened in the previous weeks as part of the 5G Mac reference tools, introduce you again to the Target 2023 program and um, also show you some demos. So we are trying to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, my name is Daniel Zalhavi. I'm the 5G Mac development uh, team reference, reference team coordinator. Uh, I will be joined by multiple people today. Um, looking at the agenda first, um, so we have an overview of the 5G Mac reference tools coming up. And then we have two main blocks in this uh, webinar. The first block is 5G broadcast and OTT streaming. So we're gonna give you a little bit of the background here again, and then also show you some demos. Uh, most of them will be in a video format. And then we have the second big building block today, which is 5G media streaming, uh, also including a demo session, uh, some pre-recorded demo, a live demo, uh, and then we finalize with, uh, I think we have two slides on this, the next steps mainly. Uh, so what we want to address next. And uh, as I said, we can try to make this as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions in between, you can drop them in the chat. Um, Jordi is taking care of the chat. You can also raise your hand. Um, so let's try to address them immediately. Otherwise we might lose the context in between. So these are the people you're gonna see today. Um, so we have uh, a virtual Klaus. Uh, so we have a video from Klaus demonstrating the seamless switching for LTE-based 5G broadcast. We have uh, Jaime also on the call, uh, gonna present some slides. And then we have a demo video demonstrating what UPV implemented in terms of a, a 5G broadcast transmitter. Uh, you will see a lot of Richard. Uh, Richard already has his camera on. Um, so he will cover the 5G media streaming part. There's also a very nice demo video from the BBC uh, demonstrating what they did with uh, their implementation of 5G media streaming. We also get an insight into the BBC lab. And um, there's also a final demo by Dolby, um, probably gonna be covered by Kurt or someone else from Dolby, I'm not sure. Um, but we also have a demo video here and uh, probably some additional explanations. Uh, so myself, I will cover the 5G broadcast part. I'm also going to demonstrate you uh, kind of a developer tool that we implemented at Fraunhofer in order to do some development in the MEMS client, like setting up a local multicast. And I'm also going to show you a quick demo. And I'm trying to do this live, but we have a video as a backup um, of a 5G MS aware application and uh, more or less a joint project between Fraunhofer and also Qualcomm. We implemented media stream handler and media session handler in an application. Okay, um, for starters, uh, so I'm gonna give you a very quick introduction of, of what 5G Mac is and what we are doing in the 5G Mac reference tools. Um, talking about 5G Mac first, uh, 5G Mac is short for Media Action Group and uh, 5G Mac is a cross industry association trying to bridge the media and ICT industries. Uh, one of the goals of 5G Mac is to drive media applications and services based on global technologies um, by leveraging the internet and 5G based access technologies. Uh, we have different stakeholders from various domains, members of 5G Mac, um, but those are for instance, content and service providers, network operators, technology solution suppliers, software developers, and also equipment manufacturers. So you have a lot of different stakeholders from different domains that are participating in these activities. The important thing is that the work in 5G Mac is really member driven and contribution driven. So um, there are different areas of work that are kind of um, divided into different um, working groups. And there are different members working inside these working groups. And the important working group for us today is the working group for the development and implementation working group where we work on the 5G Mac reference tools as one of the major outcomes of this working group. She's trying to use the arrow keys, not working. Uh, so what are we doing inside the 5G Mac reference tools? Um, first of all, we are focusing on internet and 5G based access technologies for media. And you will see a lot of items here on the left side of the slide that will become more obvious uh, during the presentation today. But just to give you an idea, so 
We are mainly focusing on 5G media streaming at this point. We have do, done a lot of work when it comes to LTE-based 5G broadcast. And in the context of both of these dynamic network uh, quality of service policies that we want to look into, uh, how to expose this event, That's all, uh, the events that are also defined in, uh, for instance, 26501, so the event exposure framework, uh, how media streaming over EMBMS works and can be implemented. Uh, 5G MPS, edge applications for streaming, and also XR. And then obviously you have a lot of related technologies. So when we talk about media streaming, we uh, will probably or mainly use um, either Dash or HLS or both uh, with a CMOF container ideally. And then we have the Dolby colleagues looking into the DVBI service layer and the integration and uh, other technologies as uh, such as WebRTC might also play a role in the future. Um, from 5G Mac Reference Tools perspective, what we are really doing is implementation of specifications. So uh, the main goal of the 5G Mac Reference Tools is to provide some kind of reference platform for testing, validation, and verification. And something that I'm always mentioning in the presentations is that we have this kind of feedback loop in place between uh, editors of the specifications, so um, the people writing the specifications, and the people implementing the specifications. So we can directly give feedback from an implementation point of view back to the editors of the specification. And I think that's really a model that is very beneficial for both parties. Um, in this context, uh, you might have also seen on our GitHub a standards repository. So we have regular calls with the CGPP SA4 experts. Uh, those are led by Richard, where we uh, kind of exchange our findings during the implementation as the experts, we get feedback. And um, I want to say in the ideal case, we can directly take this feedback and um, apply minor changes to the existing specifications based on uh, something that we saw in the implementation. Um, so this is one thing that is really beneficial um, that comes out of the reference tools. Uh, from my point of view, there are additional uh, aspects that play a role here. So you can also use the reference tools, and we have seen companies doing that as a starting point for a commercial usage. So we do not guarantee that everything is uh, commercial ready, that you can immediately use it in your product. But probably the reference tools, at least at some point, are a, good, a very good starting point to build a product on top. Um, and there's another domain that I want to uh, mention here, which is the research domain. So... Usually you also have a lot of paper being published in the context of these technologies on the left side and having some kind of reference platform that you can use as a starting point, do some additional implementation, some testing, some evaluation, and that's also very beneficial. So um, the 5G Mac reference tools can also serve uh, as a starting point for the research domain. Uh, in the end, what you get or what our goal is, uh, is to have an end-to-end -end platform for experimentation of media players and client service layers and applications. <clears throat> uh, highlighting again some important items of the reference tools. So we are an open community. We have really developers from various companies working together on the project, um, kind of putting the pieces together that everyone is implementing. Um, it's a reference implementation. I mentioned that before. We have feedback uh, coming from the standardization experts. Um, so that's also a very ideal, um, at least for me. So in case I don't understand something in the specification, I can always reach out to the experts, ask for their opinion, get some additional background information and implement it in the right way. So I think that's a very good working model. Um, last but not least, we are we have a very IPR-friendly licensing model. Uh, so if you look at the list of the official contributors on the bottom of the slide, uh, we currently have nine companies that signed the CLA, and you see a lot of the big players here. So um, it's really possible to contribute to open source software, even if you're working in a big company with potential a lot of lawyers, at least from Fraunhofer's perspective, and uh, maybe also royalties involved. Um, so mentioning the, the list of contributors here, we have the BBC, and you will see a presentation from Richard later on. We have Bitstem, uh, Klausus in the call. We have Dolby, Eurofins, Fraunhofer, ID Tolu, ORS, Qualcomm, and also UPV. So they are all working uh, on similar projects. Uh, we divided the work a bit and um, everything in the end ideally can be plugged together to have a um, great reference uh, architecture and implementation. If you want to be part of this, so how can you participate? Uh, first of all, we have different Slack channels and there's a 
uh, invite over here that should not expire. And we're also going to share the slides later on. So you can join us on Slack uh, where we discuss issues, problems. You can ask questions. Uh, we also have a Google group in place. This is the second link here where we share uh, the latest uh, releases. Uh, so we do the announcement there. We also announce upcoming calls and everything else is more or less kept on GitHub. So you will find all of the code on GitHub. We will find issue discussions there. We have project boards in order to um, kind of structure the implementation work a bit and um, also coordinate what, what needs to be done in the next few weeks. So everything is on GitHub. And ideally, uh, if we discuss any issue on Slack, um, if this is something that we need to pick up uh, at, at a certain point of time, this is then also uh, being ported to GitHub in the end. Uh, we have public calls every three weeks. So even if you're not a 5G Mac member or have not signed the CLA, you can join us and uh, get an update about the latest improvements in the reference tools. So this is done every Friday, sorry, every three weeks uh, on Friday from 1 p.m. to uh, 2.30. This is actually one of the slots that we are using today. And otherwise we have internal calls also every other week on Friday, uh, usually for an hour, one to two, uh, where we discuss the latest issues and uh, also the progress in the project. Um, what's important for today and also for the demos that we're gonna show, we uh, initiated a program that is called Target 2023. So this was done uh, last year, end of last year. Uh, with the goal to collect potential use cases that the 5G Mac reference tools should focus on. Um, we had multiple calls for that. So we started off with a call uh, which was um, done by the SA4 experts where we got an introduction on the different standards, the latest addition to the standards. And then we gave companies, people, everyone who was interested the chance to submit use cases based on these standards. And we received a lot of different use cases. I think it was around 25 use cases overall, uh, which, uh, which pe people presented. Um, and um, based on these use cases, uh, we went through them internally. We identified overlaps. We identified the relevant technologies and components that need to be implemented. And obviously, most importantly, we also checked who's willing to contribute to this project, who's, who's development resources that they're actually gonna spend on the development. Um, so we identified these use cases that you can see on the slide here. I don't wanna go into too much detail. You find all of the descriptions also on our website, but basically um, 5G media streaming plays a crucial role. 5G broadcasts plays a crucial role. We have 5 MBS also included. And there's a lot of overlap between those different um, use cases that we identified. And you will also see later on in the presentations and the demos that we uh, have significant um, progress already. Um, so the, um, for instance, uh, components like the application function, the application server, the media stream handler, um, the development already started and we have um, some of the interfaces and parts of the interfaces in place. Okay, um, with that, I'm gonna check if there are any questions so far. Otherwise we would move over to the first major item for today, which is 5G broadcast and OTT streaming. I don't see any questions in the chat. Check, okay. Then if everything is clear, let's move over to the first part. Um, as I said, 5G broadcast and OTT streaming and uh, combining these two together. So. Um, this is a reference diagram that we kind of drew uh, for all of the different components. And we broke this specific one down to what is important for LTE-based 5G broadcast. Uh, something I learned in the scope of this project is that you read 3GPP diagrams usually from the right to the left. Uh, so like a bit like a Japanese manga. So if you look at this diagram here, you see on the right side, the content application provider usually when that application provider um, wants to deliver some kind of content. Um, and typically this is done with a DASH or HLS format. If we talk about media streaming or media delivery, um, we can use a CMAP container uh, to address both formats. And these uh, resulting manifest and segment files are then typically, at least for unicast deployment or delivery, uh, they, are, they are stored on a CDN. Um, at the same time, if we want to use broadcast, um, we're gonna IP multicast them um, via the core and the radio access network. And then we have the uh, broadcast transmission here that uh, we will also see a demo on later from by UPV 
Um, so we are broadcasting our media segments and our uh, manifest files to the client. And this is uh, where it gets really interesting from a 5G Mac reference to uh, point uh, of view, because we have a lot of client components in place to kind of uh, receive this uh, broadcast transmission, uh, do a potential decoding um, of the flute encoded files, uh, save them on a local media server, and from there, um, play them in, a, in, a, in an application. So um, typically, you can use different types of applications here, basically all of the different media players that are available. Uh, MSE based, but also natively. Um, so what is the set of tools able to do that we implemented? And uh, what we mainly focused on is not only receiving a 5G broadcast and playing that back in a standard web browser, but also dynamically and seamlessly switch between broadcast and broadband. And there are actually a lot of different use cases that this can be really beneficial for. Um, I think the most important use case, or first of all, um, the use case that we already uh, that we usually start with, is that you have some kind of service continuity between broadcast and unicast. So whenever the uh, user end device is out of broadcast reception area, you have the possibility to switch back to unicast delivery to kind of guarantee a still a seamless um, experience for the end user, although the broadcast cannot be received anymore. But also um, beneficial from this kind of hybrid approach is that you enable time shifted viewing. So imagine everyone who wants to uh, kind of watch a video at the live edge can receive the broadcast, but there might be people who missed the start who want to seek back and uh, start from the beginning. They can receive the media segments via broadband, via classic OTT delivery. Um, something that people always find interesting because uh, probably there's a lot of money involved is um, an approach that is a bit similar to what's also happening on HBB TV devices right now. So you're kind of uh, doing the broadcast delivery, but you replace your advertisements with broadband ads. Um, so you can kind of personalize the ad experience for the end user while still delivering the main content via broadcast. So there's probably a lot of money involved in this business model as well. Uh, last but not least, you can also enhance the broadcast session. So uh, imagine delivering like additional languages, subtitles via broadband, and the main language, for instance, English, um, via broadcast. So everyone who wants to watch the stream in Spanish or German or French or any other language could receive the uh, additional language via broadband. So this is all interesting for this kind of hybrid approach. And if I move over to the next slide, you see that we have uh, some components in place that exactly address that. Um, so looking again or starting again on the right side, we have a library called rtlibflute that uh, can be used to flute encode and decode um, media files uh, for multicast delivery. Then on the transmitter side, you will see later on also some slides uh, on this from UPV. Um, we have a transmitter that is currently set as a private repository, but soon also to be publicly available that you can use in order to transmit your 5G broadcast to the client side, where we have again multiple components available. Uh, the first one we call RTMVMS modem, which receives this 5G broadcast and then outputs a UDP multicast to be consumed by a component called MVMS client, which does all the decoding of the files. Um, caching them on a local media server and exposing them to the components here on the left side, mainly the web user interface. The web user interface then uses a standard um, open source players such as DashJS and HLS for MSE-based playback in the web browser. Uh, we also have an example project in place that we kind of use to collect additional applications that make use of these main components. Um, I'm also going to show you a quick uh, example or concrete example later on. Um, because I implemented um, a watch folder approach that you can use for debugging of the MVMS client. And we have uh, additional uh, repository in place called RT Common Shared, where we keep uh, common configuration files that uh, can be reused uh, throughout the different components so that we don't duplicate information and need to maintain it more or less twice. We put everything that is shared in a separate uh, repository. Um, so this always scares people a bit. Um, so this is the kind of the, the overall architecture of the implementation for seamless switching. Um, I'm just going to quickly jump over this. We don't need to focus on too many details here. Um, 
The only thing that you need to keep in mind at this point is that we start on the left, not on the right this time. And um, you have the, the content provider here, you have the core part, um, actually from the core side, um, there's not much be implemented yet, uh, radio access network, and this is where it gets interesting with the transmitter uh, coming from UPV, um, kind of transmitting a 5G broadcast signal, getting picked up by a, a software defined radio on the end device. So um, everything that you can see here in the blue box is typically running on a Linux machine. So you can connect um, a software defined radio like Blade RF um, or any other, um, and receive this um, uh, radio transmission. Uh, then we have one of the major components, which is the RTMBMS modem. Um, the main task of the RTMBMS modem is to extract uh, the multicast IP packets from the radio layer uh, using a modified version of SAS RAN. It's called SAS LTE in this case, that's the old name, um, for physical layer decoding and demodulation. So you have um, kind of these SAS RAN libraries in order to do all this uh, demodulation. Uh, the output, and this is where it gets um, interesting, is a UDP multicast, then uh, going to the MBMS client, where we uh, fluid decode the files, we put them onto a, a file server, we also pass important metadata that is included in the service access information, um, uh, sorry, service announcement, I'm mixing up technologies here, in the service announcement file. Um, so the media files are cached here, and from there they are available via a reverse engine proxy to the web interface. That's the common broadcast chain that we were going here. On top of that, uh, Klaus uh, from Bitstamp implemented a seamless switching approach that allows us to kind of switch between broadcast and broadband content. So we're using uh, another cache here in order to cache everything that we received via broadcast. And when a client is doing a request um, to a specific media segment, there's either a cache hit or a cache miss. And if there's a cache miss, we go the uh, standard OTT way from our MBMS client. We fetch everything from a CDN or the, the relevant uh, segment from a CDN. We put that onto the cache. And the next time the client is requesting that, it actually gets an answer. Um, so in this case, we did not receive the media segment via broadcast, but via broadband. From a client perspective, this is not visible. And you will see this in the demo. Um, so the, the segments are delivered, um, but the client is really not aware of if it was coming from broadcast or broadband unless you tell him with a custom header or anything. So uh, these architecture diagrams are available also on GitHub if you want to dive, dive deeper into the implementation that can really help to understand how these different components work together. Um, so if you want to do any changes to the existing repositories functionality, these diagrams are a good starting point and everything should be documented on GitHub. Uh, these are some demos that we showed during the IBC 2022. So on the left, you can see the 5G Mac booth uh, that was maintained by Rodi. Um, you see this little antenna here uh, with a blade RF connected. That's our 5G broadcast transmitter. Uh, this small device here is our receiver uh, with the 5G Mac reference tools running on here with the modem and the middleware. And um, Rodi demonstrated the seamless switching approach that I just explained. And we will also see this in the demo video. Um, more or less transmitting a 5G broadcast. And once this uh, transmission fails or is out of reception area, switching back to unicast. Uh, same goes for the Naculus demo, but this is a bit more advanced. Um, so they have some Qualcomm QRD devices here that can operate in receive only mode. So they're also um, broadcasting uh, 5G, um, uh, some metadata via 5G broadcast to these end devices. Um, the devices receive the broadcast. They have an Android application running here. Uh, again, a kind of exposing the media segments and manifest files via a local server. And if the devices are out of reception area or the broadcast is turned off, then they switch to unicast delivery. So um, the difference between those two demos is that this one was running on a Linux device, or this one had uh, real phones, uh, so the Qualcomm test devices here. And last but not least, uh, so this was the demo I was showing. Don't get confused by this metaverse over 5G. That's a different demo. But I was showing a more or less a local development setup. So in case of having like a real 5G broadcast, I showed how you can use FFmpeg and the Fluid uh, encoder and decoder in order to demonstrate also the switch between multicast and unicast delivery. And we will have a demo video on that later on as well. Okay. Um, with that, enough talking. Um, 
Just checking if there are any questions so far. Uh, don't think that's the case. Um, otherwise, let me know. Um, with that, we have one introduction slide before we can actually uh, move over to the demo video. So um, Klaus from Bitstem and uh, cooperation with ORS implemented this uh, HLS signal switching into the MVMS middleware. Uh, basically what I just explained. So uh, whenever a device is in broadcast reception area, um, we take the, the segments that we receive via broadcast, cache them onto a local server and deliver them from there. And once the device is out of the broadcast reception area, we fetch them directly from the CDN. On the user end device, this is not visible. Um, so there's a seamless transition between those two. And with that, um, Jordi, I think it's time to play the first video. Okay, a quick demonstration of the uh, state of 5G broadcast seamless switching as it stands today, November 19th. Um, we have a live signal up on the Kallenberg transmitter. Um, on the screen you can see basically four windows. On the upper left is the modem process that's receiving the live signal. Below it is the middleware process um, that's receiving the flute files and um, building playlists and caching segments out of it. On the uh, upper right there is a player playing the live signal and on the lower right you can see um, the cached files as they um, come into the middleware or are provided by the middleware. All right, so at the moment we're playing from 5G broadcast. It's also displayed here in the video. Um, so this is the state we had last month. And what I'm going to do now is just kill the modem process in the upper left window. Okay, so that's been stopped. And we're now still playing from the cached file, but now it actually did switch to CDN. You can also see this down here with the uh, cached files. They now show as a source from CDN. The way this works is um, as soon as a video player requests a segment that's not um, actually available in the cache, it acts sort of like a cache miss. So it, the uh, middleware fetches that segment from CDN and then provides it to the player. Okay, so now we've uh, seamlessly switched to playback from CDN and I can now restart the modem process again. And it's going to take a while to sync. And after that, we should see 5G broadcast files come in again. Yeah, here we go. It's already switched up here. And in a minute, or a second, we should also see this down here in the files display. Yeah, so now the segments are 5G broadcast. And it no longer downloads them from CDN. Um, the way this is uh, communicated to the player is through a, a header extension. So. Um, <clears throat> We've added a header to the uh, HTTP requests, or replies rather, for a video segment that shows the, uh, the source of the file. And that just gets caught in JavaScript in the, uh, the player page and overlaid over the video. So that's where that comes from. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Okay, Jody, I'm going to take over again, just for some additional slides. All right. Uh, so that was the first demo. Um, one more slide before we see the next demo. So um, what I did uh, on front of a site is um, to kind of make also the life of other developers as easy as possible. Uh, you don't always have a 5G broadcast available, uh, but you might want to do some additional changes to the MBMS middleware or some testing. Um, so the goal here was to kind of provide a way to uh, do MBMS middleware, MBMS client development without the need for a real 5G broadcast. Um, so what we did on, on this in this case is, and I'm um, switching to this architecture on the top right here, 
uh, we are using FFmpeg, that's an open source video encoder and packager to uh, create a HLS live stream from a VOD file, so plain MP4. And we are writing the resulting manifest files and segments into a watch folder. And from there, they get picked up by an additional process. Uh, so we call it helper component here. Um, it's labeled RT Flute FFmpeg. Uh, that is uh, kind of um, waiting for these files to be added. And once they are added, it uses the Flute transmitter, also part of the 5G Mac reference tools, to multicast them to the MBMS middleware. And from there, the common approach um, goes, uh, as it always has been uh, going, also in the, um, in the video from Klaus. So we have a, a decoder here. Um, we put the decoded files onto a file server. And from there, they are accessible via an engine's proxy to our media player. Uh, the important thing is that uh, this watch folder here is also statically hosted by a Node.js Express server. Um, so whenever I turn off this uh, watch folder approach, so the Fluid FFmpeg process is not running anymore, uh, then everything gets delivered via the Node.js server and that kind of replaces our CDN in this case. So that's, a, that's an easy way to kind of replicate what you just saw with the real 5G broadcast in order to do this development in the MMS client and MBMS middleware. Uh, what we also did as part of this is um, to uh, adjust the service announcement format. So we have basically three different formats in place right now. Uh, this is also based on the discussion that we have in the 5G Mac reference tools calls. Um, so that's, uh, I think, a good example of um, coming together and discussing uh, standards and uh, also getting feedback from the experts. So we have different service announcement formats in place, uh, depending on what your uh, components are able to do, you can switch between those formats. And we also added backwards compatibility for the legacy recordings that we have. Uh, so there are some recordings being done by ORS a while ago. They should also work with this new uh, version of the MBMS middleware uh, once you set the right uh, settings. And there's a GitHub documentation in place to illustrate what are the right settings for which service announcement format. So that's a bit tricky, but I hope everything on GitHub um, helps you in order to set this up. And um, Jody, I think we can play the second video. This is also just a short one. Uh, so that's a demonstration of this architecture I just explained, um, the local seamless switching. So I'm gonna do some live comment here. I don't have any audio in the video. Um, so first of all, what you can see here at the start is a script that is also part of the example project to generate this HLS live stream from a VOD file. Um, you can see the output here, uh, I'm marking that with the mouse, um, the different uh, manifest files and media segments that are then hosted in a Node.js Express server. Uh, next step is to start the middleware. Um, so that's uh, no change here. We uh, start the middleware and it's waiting for files to be received. What we can also do here is link a local bootstrap file. So we don't need to uh, send the service announcement file. We can link it to a local file that we prepared before um, as I said, very useful for testing and debugging. And then our Fluid FFmpeg process that uh, waits for files to be added to this watch folder. And once it, uh, a file is added, then it sends that over via the Fluid transmitter to the MBMS client. So there are some transmission queued now, some tr transmissions. Uh, this is our standard web interface uh, that also ships with the 5G Mac reference tools. You can see the different qualities that we receive um, and now I'm clicking on play here. And um, since we are multicasting, or in this case it's called broadcast, um, we are multicasting the segments. Um, everything is coming from the cache via our watch folder uh, multicast flute process. And now I'm terminating the flute uh, library and uh, it should switch to CDN, just as you saw with uh, Klaus demo. That's our local express server now. And um, once we turn the watch folder on again, then it should switch back to um, the broadcast delivery. By the way, this video is a good alternative to Big Buck Bunny. So if you're tired of Big Buck Bunny, you can use Kaminandas. It takes a bit of time, but now we're back to, to broadcast delivery. Okay. Then I'm gonna take over again.
going to the next demo. which is the LTE-based 5G broadcast transmitter. Um, that's something that was developed by UPV. And I think Jaime is in the call. Uh, Jaime, should we do it in a way that I share the slides and you um, uh, talk a bit and then uh, Roy can play the, the video. Okay, perfect. Hello to everyone. I'm Jaime from UPV, a Polytechnic University of Valencia. And I'm going to present to you a quick demo about uh, the LTE-based 5G broadcast transmitter that we did in collaboration with ORS and for the reference tools of the 5G Mac. The objective is to develop a software multi-SDR platform 5G broadcast transmitter to be used in different use cases inside of the target 2023 use cases of the 5G Mac. This is compatible with multiple commercial SDR equipment, for example, Letus, USRP, Company for National Instruments, or HackRF, LiDARF, Lime SDR, etc. This transmitter is just a proof of concept. That means it's, it has the minimum features to work and to produce a proper 5G broadcast signal. It was built uh, using SRN libraries and it uses the MBMS gateway and the APC uh, programs from the SRS, SRS run suite. This 5G broadcast transmitter is only capable to transmit one PMCH that can be a scheduled for transmission. This is fixed by the M1 interface implementation of the standard. And there is no M2 interface. So that means everything is uh, configured and read from the configuration files of the, of the transmission. Here we have a di diagram of the transmitter in the left side and the receiver in the right side. The two uh, software implementations that I, I used in the demo to show the Fuji broadcast transmission. Only the receiver at the moment are available in the FATIMAC GitHub. This is because the transmitted is just a proof of concept and there is no support from the developers of the FATIMAC. We can change different params, parameters and options on the transmitter. We can select the coding scheme, the bandwidth, there are these options to select the frequency that is SDR hardware depending on the equipment that you are using and the coverage spacing. The MBMS gateway and the EPC and E not B are different programs that needs to be run in the uh, computer that is running all of them and are needed to transmit the, the fuji broadcast signal. The demo consists in to run the transmitter in one PC and run the receiver in another PC and to take some multimedia content and to transmit it over the air to be received and display in the, in the receiver side. We use for this demo uh, an ETHOS USRP N310 equipment for the transmitter, a P210 for the receiver, and I don't use, I didn't use a, a, a video like Daniel used. I use myself in a webcam streaming to show you the multimedia content. The configuration used was the um, modulation code in Skip 16. We're using the subcarrier spacing of 1.25 kilohertz. And that corresponds to a 5G broadcast release 14 uh, version of the standard. So I think right now we are going to start view the video. Okay. Uh, well, I actually launched the transmitter in the transmitter uh, program. I'm here in, in the receiver PC and launching the, re the receiver, the software implementation. Right now, it's searching for the cell and now it's synchronized with the signal and it started to decode the, the 5G broadcast transmission. And in a few seconds, we will see the video from the video player that I launched here. We use FF Play, the video player from FFmpeg. And here we are receiving the stream. And that's me in <laughs> the live video footage. This is some from time ago. <laughs> That's the reason I wear a mask. Okay, right now we are going to review the equipment. This is the transmitter. This is the equipment that the SDR we're currently using. Back there we have the antenna. Just not to make the common test where the antennas are in line of sight. Here we have the SDR equipment for the receiver. And back here, we have the, the receiver antenna. Okay. 
and that was the demonstration. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aima, perfect. Um, okay, then let me take over the slides again. I'm gonna jump to the part where we left. Okay, um, so that was the, the first big item for today. Quickly checking any questions so far regarding 5G broadcast and the part also Prima just uh, demonstrated. Okay, if not, um, don't see any, please uh, let me know if, in case I missed something. Um, then we would move over to the uh, second big item uh, for Daniel, today. This is Thomas. Um, yeah. Maybe just to add, uh, Jaime, thank you for the presentation. I believe by having this open source transmitter available is uh, very useful and helpful. We have been uh, using this, for example, also then now to have lab tests on real devices like the QRDs and so on and so on. So we were basically getting some kind of interoperability also being uh, being set up. So it, it's great to have this tool uh, available. And, um, and actually we verified it that it's workable with uh, commercial devices. So actually that that's not only with an SDR receiver as you see here, uh, but also with, with commercial devices, with like small modifications, uh, and that is uh, that just made it work there. So great work, thank you. Thank, thank you, Thomas. Okay, then let's move over to the uh, next part, which is uh, 5G meter streaming and advanced functionalities. Uh, before I hand over to Richard, um, our famous uh, 5G Mac reference tools diagram. Um, for the 5G uh, media streaming part. Um, again, just a quick overview. We will hear more details from Richard. I don't wanna um, repeat information, um, but we have a content application provider on the right side, again, doing the, uh, the packaging, the encoding. And what we have worked on as part of the 5G Mac reference tools is more or less everything that you can see here in yellow. Um, so, we have an application function in place uh, with some basic functionality that is currently being extended also to uh, support the M3 and the M1 interface. We have an application server in place. Uh, first version was also released that you can use in order to access um, a media player entry, a simple Big Buck Bunny video uh, for pull-based ingest. And um, the part that we are focusing on the client side is the media session handler and the media stream handler as well as the 5G Mesobear application. And um, I think this will get much more obvious if we show you a demo later on. Um, but uh, let's say the first MVP that Richard is also gonna present in a few minutes um, is already in place. The second MVP is almost done, I think. Um, so we are kind of even ahead of schedule in my opinion, um, because Target 2023 was supposed to start in 23 uh, and we are already in a very good state. Uh, when it comes to the different repositories, um, what you can already find on our GitHub is um, the libflute, as I mentioned before, but also the application function and application server uh, development uh, being done by, being done by David, Dev, and Richard from uh, BBC. They are also responsible for the releases here, so um, very well done. Uh, Shoutouts to them. Um, then we have the media session handler and media stream handler currently being private repositories. We're working on an official release here. And we already have some sample applications in the RT 5 gms application repository. Uh, one that was coming from Podi, uh, some basic exoplay experimentation, and also a DVBI demo by, uh, being done by Dolby that we will see later on. Um, external players used again. So we are also planning to use dash.js um, for the media stream handler, the media player part, we are currently using the exoplayer. And again, configuration files are typically shared uh, whenever they are needed in multiple uh, projects in the common shared repository. And I think with that, I would hand over to Richard. And Richard, I'm gonna, we're gonna try the same thing again that we did before, should work now. Okay, great. Um, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Richard from uh, BBC Research and Development. Um, so yes, um, th this table just gives a summary of, 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 of what uh, Daniel just showed on the previous slide in terms of the, the main repositories for 5G media streaming. Um, it will uh, become clearer what this all means a bit later on, I think. But yes, there's this application server and application function that we've been working on. The, the application server is basically um, offering 
a, a CDN edge node to support um, one of the features in 5G media streaming called content hosting. And uh, our reference implementation of that is, is based on a, a reverse proxy called Nginx. Um, and uh, we've wrapped it with a little bit of Python. Um, the application function um, we've implemented in C, and 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 that 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 that's the that's the kind of um, it's the brain of five G media streaming, really. Uh, um, it's it's where a couple of RESTful network APIs are implemented, um, and it integrates with the the core of the five G network. Um, and we've we've based our implementation on that on another framework called Open 5GS, which was used to create um, the 5G core that we're um, using in our lab as well. Um, and that's been quite um, uh, good for us. Um, as Daniel mentioned, uh, Qualcomm and with a bit of uh, input from him as well, have been working on a media session handler. That's one of the client side components um, and the media stream handler, the other client side component that, that, that Daniel has been working on. So the media session handler is the, is the um, is the corresponding function that works with the application function and the media stream handler in this case a media player based on exo player that uh, that's that's what talks to the the application server and then lastly um the uh, the the application sits at the, uh, at the top in the client controlling things and um uh, daniel's going to be demonstrating um his um application later on um which um, provides the media session handler, but also a little bit of media stream handler capability, and 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 Dolby. Um, we're going to see a demo, I believe, um, of of their um, application that integrates a DVBI service catalog with the XO player. So you can see how all the little pieces of the jigsaw are starting to come together. Um, but uh, th these are all the um, repository um, names, and um, th th that's that's where you'll find the code um on uh, github uh at the moment so um i was wondering actually about uh just telling you a little bit about 5g media streaming um architecture and really this is this 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 is this is the equivalent horrible diagram that um you can't really see in enough detail here but it, it shows the complexity of what we're trying to do um as a kind of a, a sort of helicopter view um in in the middle of all of this we have the um the 5g core network which has got this green boundary around it so these are these are the key components especially with the user plane function um which is where the the, the traffic crosses uh between the the core and the um and, and the and the mobile device on the left hand side oh sorry that's uh there we go um uh and then we also need a radio access network in, in, as part of this that could be simulated. We've we've been playing around with uh, SRS RAN um, amongst others, um, and we'll show you a little demo using that later on. Um, but it's actually these purple bits on the far left and the far right um, that uh, are the subject of the work that that um, 5G Mag is doing. On on the right hand side, here's the application server. That's the CDN capability I was talking about, um, and our reference um, implementation is based on Nginx. Um, here's the application function, um, and uh, that's how the whole thing is provisioned and how it operates. As I said, it's kind of the brain of the operation. And then in the on the client side, um, we've got the media stream handler. So this is the stuff that uh, Daniel's been working on um using exo player to play back media and we've got the uh the media session handler here um and that's the stuff that uh, uh qualcomm and daniel have been working on um and there's some reference points and unfortunately they they have duplicate names to some of the ones that are used for the lte uh, based uh, 5g broadcast um the important ones are the 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 reference point m1 which is used for provisioning M2, which is used for media ingest. Um, M3, which is not actually defined by 3GPP yet, but it's used as a configuration interface between the application function and the application server. M4, which is used to actually stream media from the application server to the media player. And M5, uh, which is used to control um, things. And this is the really interesting part for 5G media streaming, um, because this is this is the, the way that the client can talk to the network and influence what's going on. And we'll see a little bit more about that 
um, in the video later. But um, this this is this is this is this is the uh, this is the the unique part of of five G media streaming, if you like. So there we go. It's 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 a lot to implement, and we realised that it's far too much to implement in in one go. And so we decided to divide it down into into little um, uh, smaller chunks, bite sized chunks. And so the first thing we developed was a, a minimum viable product. Um, which we called MVP1, which only included the application server and the media stream handler. And that's essentially um, a CDN edge node and a media player. So that's not very exciting, uh, but um, it's, you got to start somewhere. And here's a little diagram just showing the application server and the media stream handler. And in this case, um, what we did is we 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 tried to start following some of the 3GP specifications. So there's this thing called a content hosting configuration on the right hand side, which is used to configure the application server, and it tells it what to what media to ingest and, and make available. So it, what it ingests at M2 and makes available at M4 to the uh, to the media player. Um, and it's very simple in that you can only have one of these configurations. It's just a simple JSON file. And then we do a little manual translation of that into something called service access information, which we make available to the, to the application um, running on the UE. And that allows it to then contact the, the media stream handle, handler and, and play back some content. So that's that's the summary of MVP one, and then just to put a bit more flesh on 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 those bones, we've used as I said earlier Nginx to create this application server, and here's the content hosting configuration that we use to configure it, and here's the service access information um, that we manually generate from that. So um, that's 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 the basic that setup. Uh, we pull. It's actually uh, our old friend Big Buck Bunny um, that we that we pull from an origin server and make available to to the media player. And and the reason that we've done it as a pull based ingest initially is to make it easy for anyone to download the code and, and run it themselves. You don't even need a five G network to do this. This is all just basic bits of software that you can you can run yourself. Um, and we've got as far as releasing that. Um, uh, the current release of the application server is version 101, um, and uh, you, we invite you to, to download that and, and try it out for yourselves. Um, on the media stream handler side, I don't know, Daniel, if, if you want to add anything about um, your ExoPlayer-based um, implementation here. I'm searching for more, sorry. Um, at this point, I think I can just explain it as part of the demo. Um, hmm. So, but just just some highlights. So um, yeah, we're using the Exo player. We implemented um, some of the M7 interface functions. So there's some kind of Exo player adapter in place and that maps Exo player native functions to the one, uh, to the functions defined in the specification. Um, otherwise, um, I think we will see everything as part of the demo. I'm trying to show you later on um, the steps by uh, setting some debug um, points or breakpoints in the code and um, highlighting the important steps. So I think at this point we are fine with you. Okay, I'll move on. Very good. So that's that's that was our first minimum viable product, um, and you'll see some demos of that later. Later on, um, uh, uh, I seem to there we go. Let's uh, so let's uh, come much further. Let me go back. Uh, and, and here we wanted to start um, implementing some of the real um, media streaming uh, capabilities. So we needed to implement this application function brain and then on the client side, the, the media session handler to go with it. Um, this is a bit unstable at the moment. There we go. Um, and the, the, key, the key thing that's different from the, the previous MVP is that now we've got the application function and the media session handler in place. And what we do is we use the same content hosting configuration uh, file just to configure up the, the application function. Um, so it, it keeps it straightforward. It's, this, it's just a shared configuration file between the two. And having done that, we can then um, make this service access information available via this M5 reference point directly um, 
to the, um, the the media session handler there's still one piece of information that needs to be passed manually and that's this thing called the provisioning session id and that's that's passed privately to the application that helps to bootstrap the whole process uh, and allows the the media session handler then to retrieve the service access information that it needs so that's that's the summary there um and then in a bit more detail um well yes I'm, I'm, I'm just repeating myself a little bit, but you, you can just see a little, little bit more detail of how, how this actually works at M5 using a RESTful um, request. Um, and again, we've got um, a release of this application function. It's uh, 100 at the moment, although we've actually um, got a, a bug fix um, release that's currently under review. So we're, we're hoping to release 101 quite soon as well. And that's got um, improved logging. Um, but um, you're, you're very welcome again to download the application function and have a play with that as well. And uh, yeah, as usual, you can feedback uh, via GitHub. Um, so then, Moving on from um, that, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we're working on right now, and this is a bit more bleeding edge. Um, uh, sorry, let me scroll past. And um, we've got uh, this idea to configure the application server directly from the application function using this M3 reference point, and this is this thing highlighted here. Um, and you'll notice that the, the difference now is that the application server no longer reads this content hosting configuration from a file um, because it, it, it gets it gets provisioned at a reference point M1. Um, well, no, sorry, uh, let me rephrase. It, it gets it gets provisioned from the file um, and then it gets configured over M3 automatically um, by the application function. So this is moving towards the, the end goal of everything being um, uh, a RESTful API. Um, and we've actually uh, pretty much completed our um, development on that, just some final touches to be made. Um, so we've got a new version of the application function waiting on the development branch in GitHub and a new version of the application server similarly on, on the development branch in GitHub. We haven't done a formal release yet, but we're hoping to in the next uh, uh, small number of weeks once uh, people have had a chance to test it out. Um, so that's that's M3. And then looking even further forward to some stuff that we haven't worked on yet, we get to um, see um, what we're doing with the provisioning api so this is this is a work in progress at the moment for us um so the idea here is to actually provision uh using the restful api so then this content hosting configuration file only needs to be used by um, the, the client that's using that provisioning api and once we've got to this point we've kind of more or less realized the basic 5g media streaming architecture so that's as i say a work in progress We've, we've we've already implemented what's called the provisioning session and the content hosting configuration aspects of that, and we're currently working on the on the provisioning of of service certificates to support HTTPS based um, um, sessions at M4. Um, and there's a bit of wiring up that we need to do here as well. So yeah, that's 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 the work in progress. And then looking even further ahead to what's coming next, um, we'd like to integrate the um, the application function with the policy control function in the um in the um in the core of the network so this is this reference point here n5 um in the uh the architecture is the policy control function and this is where things start to get really interesting because we can start to then use the application function to directly manipulate the quality of service in the, the 5g network so for example if we want to, um, uh, you know, allow a, a five megabit stream, we can we can ask the network, can you guarantee us a five megabit path through the network, please? And similarly, we can ask the network what uh, what the conditions are like at the moment and what what can be sustained. So the, the, these are the dynamic quas and the network assistance features in five G media streaming. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of of what what what, what we're hoping to work on this spring.
And with that, we can then show our little demo of this. So um, what we've done is we've built uh, a 5G standalone mobile network in our lab. And you'll see this in our little demo video. But uh, we've used a, an open source core based on the, the open um, 5GS project. And we've built a, a, an open source cloud RAN. Uh, this is currently based on SRS RAN. And then we've got uh, some software defined radio uh, in the lab as well to turn that into an RF signal. And then we can transmit that to a, an off the shelf um, mobile phone. And, and then we've also uh, deployed our reference application server and application function um, in, in our cloud based um, core. Um, so they sit alongside the standard core components. Um, and yeah, so that's just an open stack environment. So Jordi, um, uh, please, could you run VT? Welcome to BBC R&D Signal Processing Lab in London. For the past few months, we've been building a 5G standalone testbed to experiment with advanced features of the 5G system. We've built a cloud-based 5G core and a 5G cloud RAN, and we're using software-based radio technology to act as a 5G base station that off-the-shelf mobile handsets connect to. Working as part of the 5G MAG Reference Tools Initiative, we've also started developing reference implementations of 3GPP's application server and application function for 5G media streaming, and we're going to demonstrate that to you today. 5G media streaming specifies a media session handling network API that allows mobile applications to collaborate with the 5G network through a 5GMS application function with the aim of improving the quality of experience. Using this API, handsets can request a different network quality of service to satisfy the needs of a particular media streaming session. Applications can also request an estimate of the bit rates that the network can currently sustain and can request a short boost to help them replenish their buffers. Finally, the mobile handset can report both media consumption and quality of experience metrics to the 5GMS application function to help it better understand what's going on in the network. The first feature we have implemented is content hosting, where the 5GMS application server is configured to act as a CDN. To make this work, an application provider first provisions a content hosting configuration in the 5GMS application function. The application function then configures this in one or more 5GMS application servers. These act as caching web proxies back to the content origin. Finally, the application function returns service access information to the application provider, which it can pass privately to the 5GMS aware application. This includes a media entry point URL pointing to a dash MPD. In our demonstration, we simply pass this service access information to the VLC media player running on a mobile handset to kick off media streaming and this causes it to retrieve this, the dash MPD through the 5GMS application server. Here we have got three terminals, the top one capturing the output of the application function, the middle one capturing the output of the application server and the bottom one capturing the access logs of the application server. Let's start the application server first and let's see the uh, capture the uh, log files of the application server. We see that the application server has started but it hasn't yet been configured by the application function. Now let's start the application function and let's capture the logs of the application function. Here we see that there is a provisioning session that is being allocated for, uh, by the application function. Here in this demo, we, the, the application function reads the configuration from a file and it sends the configuration information back uh, to the application server, which we see that it has, it, it has been configured with. Now we see the access logs generated by the application server as it serves the content. I'm going to de demonstrate our 5G standalone test bed that we've got running in the lab here. So we have a number of pieces of equipment to look at. The first thing to see is we're running a base station here. This is a software defined base station running on this PC. That's connected to our cloud uh, and that's also then connected to the application function and server running in the cloud. This is also connected to this box here 
which is an RF generator, so that's taking the signal from the base station, generating an RF signal. We can see on the log here we've got a phone connected and we can see how much data we're sending to the phone. On this analyzer here we can see the RF signal that's being generated and we can see the downlink signal here and the uplink signal here. And then in the screen box here we have the phone connected and we can see we're streaming BBC News Channel Live to the phone from the application server. Here in the lower window, we see the access logs of the application server showing the request from the mobile application. Okay, that's the demo. Many thanks, uh, and, and well, and many thanks to my colleagues Dev and, uh, and John, uh, who uh, um, contributed to that, and, and also to uh, our colleague David um, up in uh, up in Salford, who's who's been working on this as well with us in the background. Um, yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Richard. Uh, thank you for the demo. Also, Dev, David, uh, John. Um, so we would proceed uh, to the next demo. I'm quickly going to show you how this playback looks in ExoPlayer and what we did in terms of the media player, the media stream handler and the media session handler. I'm doing something risky now because um, prior to this call, I was trying to share my whole screen and my Zoom crashed two times. So um, Rodi, in case I'm gone now, um, maybe we can uh, move on to the Dolby demo and once I'm back, we show the video. But I'm going to try to share the screen now and hopefully it works. Okay, that seems to be fine. Good, that was a major problem. Okay, um, so what I would like to show you is what we implemented together with uh, the colleagues from Qualcomm uh, in terms of the media player, uh, the M7 interface, and also a background service that uh, reflects what the media session handler is doing. Uh, regarding the setup, I have an Android phone connected to my laptop. Uh, you can see the output of the Android phone here on the right, so I'm mirroring the screen. Um, in the background, I also have for development purposes running again a static web server. Um, so that kind of replaces the application server that Richard just demonstrated. But uh, in theory, you can also just plug in the BBC application server. So there will be um, something similar. Uh, I'm just using this local server for development purposes. And the local server is doing nothing special here in this case. I have some predefined service access information uh, pointing to two different media player entries. So to two different MPDs. Uh, one is a VOD, one is a live stream. And um, this, uh, this um, application server, this in theory, this application server is then linked in the application. Um, so this is running in the background. <clears throat> I'm moving over to Android Studio now. Um, and for the main code flow at this point, um, we are kind of simulating this M8 interface that Richard also talked about. So I have a static JSON file here uh, in the assets folder that uh, contains these two media player entries that you will also find in the mocked application server. So one for the VOD file, one for the live uh, content. Um, what I'm also going to do is uh, I'm linking to the application server here. So that's like a, a constant value uh, with some IP and the uh, corresponding interface. Everything else after this V2. Um, so for instance, the provisioning, provisioning session ID gets auto-populated uh, later on, and I'm going to show you how. So I'm starting this now on my Android device in debug mode um, so that we can step a bit through the different um, important breakpoints. So um, started in debug mode. Uh, still installing, I guess. And then we have the first breakpoint. Uh, so each Android application has a so-called main activity. Um, that's what you see on the right side here, more or less the different UI elements and um, something that is being performed um, as a foreground service. Uh, the first thing we are doing here, and um, please don't be confused that this is all in the same project. And we will kind of uh, put this into different project at a certain point of time. Just for implementation purposes, it's better right now to have these components running in the same project. So the main activity would kind of reflect what the 5GMS aware application is doing. So a first step is we are talking to the media session handler. And there's a function that is called initialize playback by media player entry um, that is implemented in our adapter class that talks to a background service. 
Uh, this background service was uh, implemented by Qualcomm. So there's a media session handler running in the background, um, trying to react to these uh, messages that I'm sending here. Yeah. So if I call this now, um, providing the media player entry from the static JSON file, uh, we go to the next step. Uh, so there's this adapter that sends a message to the background service. And um, the main benefit we get from that is that we can use the same media session handler. So a single media session handler running in the background kind of handling multiple clients at the same time. Um, so we are sending a message here, um, including our media player entry. Uh, once we receive this message in the background service, and if I scroll a bit up here, and I hope you can read this, I'm zooming in. Uh, we have a message handler here that reacts to different types of messages. Um, the message we just sent is down here. Um, and there's something magically happening. And this is a good example for um, discussion that we are having with the editors of the specification. Because in order to get a service access information from my application server, I need the provisioning session ID. Um, so what I have in place right now is a so-called lookup table, which is a simple hash map or a simple map. Um, so I have these two media player entries here that are mapping to specific provisioning session IDs. Um, so I can look up which is the corresponding provisioning session ID in this case. If I go down here and then this URL will be generated and it will talk to our mocked application server and receive the whole service access information that I showed you in the beginning. Um, so I'm going to the next step here. Um, we might need to restart this at some point because I'm talking too long and we might run into a timeout. Let's see. Um, okay, so we talked to our um, application server in the background. We got a message uh, with the whole service access information that we are saving here. And in this case, we are sending a message back to the uh, media player, or you can also send it back to the application, uh, basically triggering the playback on the device. So uh, there's a start playback message from the media session handler to the media stream handler, to the media player. Um, uh, to trigger the playback and uh, the playback itself is just the M7 interface that you find in the spec. Um, so we, as I said, map these native extra player functions to the corresponding functions in the specification. So um, this one calls start playback and then you have the attach, the preload and the play function. So if I resume this now, um, you see that the playback is starting. Um, that's the beauty of the front of our Wi-Fi, which is uh, apparently gone sometimes, it takes some time, should start soon. So that's the VOD content we are playing now. And we have these uh, the small drop down here. Um, so I can also select the live stream. Then again, we go through the same code flow and just quickly going through this, <coughs> sorry. And um, another thing I wanted to mention while this is playing, you see these status messages popping up down here. That is also something that we are deriving from the exit player sending to the media session handler for further progressing or processing. Um, so at some point, and we're going through the specification at this point, at some point you will also find um, the corresponding implementation for metric reporting, for consumption reporting. Um, obviously you need to implement that on both ends. So you need it in the client, in the media session handler, and also the corresponding interface or endpoint in the, um, in the application function via the um, M5, M5 interface. Yeah, so I, I also wrote uh, Jordi quite recently. I mean, we have all this technology in place and in the end, the only thing that we can really show is a running video stream, but I think you get the idea. So there's a lot of different components involved to get this video stream uh, to run. Okay, and that was a short live demo. Um, at this point, I think I would move over and sorry for sharing the slides that way, but um, this is what I just explained. And then um, we have an upcoming demo from Dolby. And um, let me maybe start, start the screen share again uh, in the right mode. OK, you should see the slide now again. Yep. And I hand over to my colleagues from Dolby. Thanks, Daniel. This, this is Frédéric, uh, Frédéric Gabin. And I'm, I'm standing in for my colleague, Kurt Krauss, who, who unfortunately couldn't make it. I'll just say a few words to introduce the demo that my colleague Giuseppe will, uh, will present. So here we've uh, integrated functionality on, on the application level to help address some of the, the interests of the broadcasters in scope of 5G broadcasting. The demo at this point shows the combination of the EXO player with the DVBI client. 
and in future the uh, the application so the DVBI and ExoPlayer should also use the 5G functionality that were that's under uh, development and that were presented uh, earlier. So we we see that's where we see the value, the ability to do 5G broadcast and streaming, and the uh, the uh, enablement of discovery of DVBI and access. So that's uh, that's the the added value. And uh, then Giuseppe, can you take it from there? Yes, so there should be a short video. Uh, mm -hmm. In the next slide, I can I can talk over it. Yes, so quick introduction on what has been done uh, so far for the Dolby DVBI uh, app. The idea was to to glue an Exo Player instance with the DVBI from ten from Sofia Digital, right? Um, which is publicly available and exposes a, a DVBI uh, service list. We did this by leveraging the WebView Android class. In particular, uh, our WebView activity is taking care of uh, setting the stage for the DVBI front end to be, to be displayed uh, in the OnCreate. And uh, um, later on, we also intercept intents uh, for playback and we send them to ExoPlayer uh, for playback. So in the right part of the screen, there is the screencast of, of my tablet. You can see with the DVBI app running, it shows uh, the uh, uh, DVBI front end service list. We could uh, um, click on any content. We could uh, select, uh, uh, in particular, for example, uh, an HVC and con uh, encoded content in this case, Tears of Steel. And uh, you will see the playback is uh, uh, offloaded to, to uh, ExoPlayer. Um, you can see the typical ExoPlayer display logs on, on top of the screen, and you have a possibility to use the ExoPlayer controls uh, for the for the content. Um, so yeah, that, that that's it. This will conclude the demo, and, and thank you for your attention. Perfect, Giuseppe. Thank you. Okay. Um, just to highlight again, so this is currently a pull request on the five G Mesoware application repository. Um, in our Git on, on our GitHub, um, we're going to review that. Just uh, do some also quick checking, and um, then this will be publicly merged and available to everyone who's interested. Okay, then I'm taking back over just for some final slides. Um, so those were basically all of the demos that we had. Uh, the videos, um, I think we can also put them up on, on YouTube if everyone agrees. Uh, otherwise, they're currently also embedded in the slides. Uh, let's check how we do that in the in the best way. And since we also recorded this as a screen uh, recording or um, as a session recording, um, probably this will also go up on our website. OK, some final words. So uh, going back to one of the earliest slides we had, um, you saw that we have various components in place by now, but uh, we are still not done. Um, and one thing that we wanted to highlight is that we are focusing on all of these different areas and technologies that you see on the slide here, but we welcome every contribution that maybe even goes into another direction. Um, the important thing to highlight is that uh, we need obviously development resources. So our goals and our scope will always be based on where we have development resources and where we have people spending time on actual development. Um, so contributions are more than welcome. Um, if you have anything that you would also like to see as a use case, that's also more than welcome. Uh, you know where to find us, um, how to reach out to us. Uh, another thing I wanted to highlight is that we working on a cloud installation, especially of the AF and the AS, so that is, this is accessible to everyone who wants to play around with these tools uh, without having to set them up on a on a dedicated laptop or uh, in their own cloud. Uh, so that's something that is coming up. Um, yeah, otherwise, as I said, um, we have interest in many aspects, 5G media streaming, MBS, um, LTE-based 5G broadcast. So in case your, your company is interested in that and is willing to contribute to open source projects to um, yeah, come together and um, build like a, a solid and uh, good solution as a foundation, maybe for also commercial products. Um, please reach out to us and uh, consider joining these development activities. Um, we have for, as an overview, just the, the target 2023 use cases again, but there's always room for new use cases. Uh, we're working on these different use cases as you saw today. Um, something that we did not mention today is, for instance, the emergency alert use case that uh, Qualcomm and Thomas are specifically working on. So that might also something might also be something that is coming up in the near future.
Um, with that, I think we have covered everything. We are good in time, um, seven minutes left. If there are any questions, um, please raise your hand or uh, put them in the chat. Uh, otherwise, I will already say thank you for joining. Um, thank you everyone for presenting. And um, I think we have a good overview now of uh, what the, the reference tools are capable of and uh, what is coming up next and what we are working on right now. Um, yeah, so thank you everyone.